It is unclear when and by whom the Old Kingdom was actually founded, which is further complicated by an ongoing debate over if the Third Dynasty should be included in the Old Kingdom or not. If one considers this dynasty as part of the Old Kingdom, then one of the most important names of Egyptian history and pyramid construction is that of King Djoser. Djoser was the second king of the Third Dynasty, and he is best known, together with his architect, Imhotep, for the building of the First Pyramid, which is today called the Step Pyramid. The rest of the Third Dynasty is fairly obscure, and we don't know the names of several of the kings with certainty. The Fourth Dynasty is the most relevant to us in this course, as it sees the construction of the Giza pyramids and the use of the plateau as a cemetery for the Egyptian elite. Again, the beginning of the Fourth Dynasty is a rather obscure period, the number of kings and the length of their reigns being difficult to precise. However, before Giza, King Snefru, first ruler of the Fourth Dynasty, attempted to create the perfect pyramidal form. He is known for at least four pyramids, the Small Step Pyramid at Sela, the Maidum Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid at Dashur South, and the Red Pyramid at Dashur North. Because of this, Senefer is known as the greatest builder of pyramids in history. His pyramid at Maidum is a rare example of the transition between the Step Pyramid, initiated by Djoser, and the True Pyramid. We will discuss this topic further on in this course. The Red Pyramid is Senefer's final resting place, and even though it was never completed, it is the first successful attempt to create a true pyramid. Senefer's son, Khufu, is the king who initiates construction at Giza, establishing a royal and elite cemetery there. The height of his pyramid is unparalleled and became the symbol of a centralized and powerful state, which was able to amass and manage the resources and workforce necessary for such an enormous project. Khufu's son, Khafre, after succeeding his uncle, Jedefre, tried to emulate the achievements of his father by also constructing his own pyramid on the Giza Plateau. Even though Khafre's pyramid appears to be taller than his father's, this is only because it is built on a slightly more elevated platform, for this pyramid is in fact about three meters shorter than that of Khufu's. Khafre's pyramid complex includes the Sphinx, although we are uncertain about who this monument is meant to depict. Menkare, Khafre's son and successor, built the last and smallest of the royal pyramids at Giza. After this king, Giza was abandoned as a royal cemetery in favor of Saqqara, even if some private individuals of the elite continued to be buried there. Note, however, that this is not the end of pyramid building. On the contrary, pyramids would be built throughout the rest of Egyptian history, not only as royal monuments, but later also appropriated into non-royal private funerary contexts in the New Kingdom. The beginning of the 5th and 6th dynasties see the construction of smaller pyramids at other sites in Lower Egypt. One of the most important innovations of these pyramids is what we now call the pyramid texts. These texts provide valuable information on the purpose and meaning of these monuments, which will be referred to in more detail in Module 4.